Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We got a fun episode teed up for today, a topic that, well, is just not talked about enough, and that's talking, communication. We're going to dive into communication, your thinking around communication, how you show up, and your mindset. Now, I always talk about the three-legged stool of business, mind, body, and business. In business, we got your harmonious architecture, right? The disruptive architecture you need. It is the context around all of the content in your business and in your life. It's the filter for how you view and do what you do. But the other two pieces are really important, the mind and the body. We're going to dive into the mind today. The body will always follow. But before we go too much further, let me bring my guest on. I want to introduce you to Aaron. Aaron, welcome to the show. Hey, Brandon. Thank you. Thank you. I'm super excited about this conversation. So before we dive in, we're going to be talking about mindset, communication, the brain. Things are going to get complicated here. I'm excited for it. Tell the audience a little bit about what you do. Yeah, sure. So I'm a former educator. I spent 15 years in the classroom. Um, I actually am a school shooting survivor. And so after that incident happened, I sought out my own trauma recovery work and did some amazing learning and realized that I had a lot of gaps in my understanding of how people um, function in the world. Um, and I learned a lot of incredible skills. And so our organization is working to bring these skills that help people be more productive and be able to process all the hard things in life better. Um, we're bringing these skills to um, students in our school system and um, adults in the working world and pretty much everything in between. I love that you're tackling this from early ages because that's where that's where most of our problems start, right? I mean, mm -hmm. most people develop issues and traumas and it doesn't have to be as severe as what you went through, but we carry that with us. Yeah, actually, no. I'm going to talk about two things really quickly, if that's okay oh, with you. Sorry to mean to interrupt you. No, no. But number one, as we talk about trauma, I think it's really important to think of it as a spectrum. Um, you know, trauma could be something, for example, my dad, when I was in high school, I didn't make the lacrosse team. And he was like, Aaron, you're a quitter. And in the grand scheme of trauma, that's not really that traumatic. It's not losing a family member. It's not being in a school shooting. Um, but it's something that has come up in my brain often. And every time I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm like, Aaron, don't be a quitter. Your dad said you're a quitter. Don't be a quitter. Um, and so trauma is really anything big or small that has left an imprint on your brain in some way um, that you then have trauma responses to. So I definitely respond to that little inner voice in my head. That's my trauma response. I refuse to quit things now because because I refuse to be considered a quitter. Um, the other thing I was going to say as well is that you're talking about early intervention. Um, I would say it's something that we should be practicing at the start of our lives and really learn and engage in through our entire length of our lives um, because we go through so many different stages as humans. Um, and I'm just going to put a quick fact out there that 26% um, of U.S. kids by the age of four are experiencing their first traumatic event in their lives. So yes, when we say early intervention, we mean like just, you know, as we're teaching them to crawl, we should also be teaching them how to process trauma. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that those two things are as easy. <laughs> I teach. mean, in theory. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, that, that's funny, but it's also, it's true. Listen, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm on board. I believe it. And the reason I, I think it's so important is because I've seen the other side. I've seen what, what those kids turn into as employees and business leaders and it's, it takes a lot to reverse that trauma, but it also mm -hmm. takes a lot to recognize it. Yeah. Good for you for recognizing it. Obviously, you've done the work of how it shows up in you. But let me ask you maybe the, the opposite of that question, the, the Aaron is not a quitter mindset. How has that hurt you in your life? Oh, yeah. I mean, I definitely there is such a thing as toxic positivity um, and there is such a thing as as going, you know, either side to any extreme. Right. Um, and so I definitely am a very stubborn human being who does not take no for an answer because I just have determined I'm going to get my way um, because I'm not going to be a quitter. So there's always extremes for sure. Yeah, that's the reason I ask is because that's actually something that that we run into a lot with. So with the harmonious architecture, the M stands for modify, which is traditionally change management in business. Now, when we work with someone who's stubborn, your words, not mine, um, <laughs> they, it can be really hard to convince them to change because they may see that as quitting or they may say, no, I said I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. 
Mm -hmm. Well, the numbers behind it say you shouldn't keep doing it. So it's actually yeah. going to hurt you should you keep doing it. Um, so I, I wanted to highlight that quickly. But all right, let's dive. Let's keep diving in here because this is this is a really interesting conversation, especially around, around business leaders and how we optimize ourselves. So what are what are some things that we need to recognize in ourselves as trauma responses or just our general mindset that, that yeah. you would like to bring to light? Yeah, I'm going to give a quick um, just overview of how our brain works. Um, mm -hmm. I personally have a goal of making all children, making sure all children, you know, by the time they enter kindergarten, understand how the brain functions. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to quote my daughter on some of these things. She is seven. She loves to tell teach people about how the brain works. Um, but she, we always start the caveman part of our brain. Um, when our thoughts enter our brain, that's where they initially go always. Um, and in that, when our brain sorry, when our thoughts get stuck in that part of our brain, we tend to live in fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. So we're very panicky. We're not rational. Um, we maybe are clamping up. We're not able to articulate our, our thoughts very clearly. Um, we are just really, I mean, we all know what fight, flight, freeze, or fawn feels like. It's um, touching the hot stove. It's what we need to survive. It's, it's, it's the way that we avoid um, emergencies. And it really protects us when things are very quick and very fast and out of our control. But that's not where we function best. Um, and so really at Undo Mindset, our goal is to help people transition from not functioning so much there, but really our frontal lobe. Our frontal lobe is actually the last part of our brain to develop. Um, it actually doesn't develop till you're 25-ish. Um, and so... Um, you know, the second part of our brain that we, our thoughts go through. So if we're able to get past the fight, flight, freeze, or fawn part of our brain, if we go to the middle part of our brain um, and our thoughts land there, that's where we tend to be very defensive. We might make excuses. We might blame other people. We um, still lack that accountability and that self-reflection component right there. So again, we want to really slow down our thoughts, um, apply skills, coping skills, um, really getting our thoughts to that frontal lobe, because that's where we can be more logical. It's where our thoughts slow down. So we're able to look at all of the details of what's happening. Um, we're able to really take in more information when our brain is, is cognitively on board there. Um, so as it applies, I'm not sure what your actual original question was, but as it applies to business, um, being able to understand this process process of our brain is really um, imperative, in my opinion, because it, anything in the business industry is really fast paced. Um, it's you are oftentimes there's other people who are dependent on you to make the right decision. Um, I, you know, you you are dealing with a lot of different personalities, you have to look at the um, balcony view of your business or your industry, but also still be in the weeds and the details of that industry. And there's just a lot of a fast pace, especially in the 21st century, business is just a really fast paced industry. Um, and so our goal in working with small businesses, corporations, large businesses, anybody in that industry is to really help those folks to um, slow down their thoughts, make sure that the thoughts we're, we're um, utilizing are the thoughts that have landed in our frontal lobe, that they're not just impulse thoughts. Um, and, and really helps honestly benefit the culture of your industry because you understand how other people work better. You understand how their brains are functioning. You can start to see like, oh, this person I'm talking to, they're still right here in that caveman part of their brain. And I don't think we're in a place to problem solve yet. Let me wait until they're more rational in a calmer space. Um, and it really helps to um, impact the culture of, an, in, of a company um, greatly. What yeah, was the I question? Mean, Did I answer you? I have no idea, but we're going to move on because that was a fantastic answer and I loved it. <laughs> That's what we're all about here. Um, but I, I do want to dive in there because you said you said some interesting things, especially about the structure of the brain. Um, so we have, well, let me clarify real quick. I've heard of fight, flight, freeze. What was the fourth F? Fawn. Fawn is if fun. you, yeah. And I actually had an educational consultant once who was like, let me tell you the like 80 other ones that she came up with. <laughs> let's um, not, let's stick to four. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say most experts in the industry would say there's four now. Fawn is really like, um, you know, a sad deer in the corner that's kind of just curled up and you know, you're not clamming up like freeze is like you can't move. Fawn is maybe I'm going to go sit in self pity and wallow in my feelings. Oh, I like the Grinch where he's like 6 p.m. wallow in self pity. I can't cancel <laughs> that again. I oh, the things that. we learned from the Grinch. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so we have fight, flight, freeze, Grinch. We're renaming the fourth one just so everybody has a clearer picture. Perfect. Uh, okay, so we have that. That's our caveman brain. Fully understand. We have the middle part and the frontal lobe. Um, here's my argument, and I want you to I want you to disprove this. I don't think most people in the workplace fully develop their frontal lobe. How do you feel about that statement? I I mean, I would say that they say the frontal lobe is developed till you're 25. I did, I did this work personally at the end of my 30s. So I don't feel like my frontal lobe was totally developed at 25. Um, I don't know. How can we define when is the frontal lobe fully developed? I don't know. I personally think that we are always working to develop that part of our brain the rest of our lives. I have seen that in my own being and my own lived experience. Um, so I would say, I, I think the other thing that I like to talk about with the 25 and the frontal lobe though is, are you aware of the, the um, terminology cognitive dissonance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So cognitive dissonance for anybody listening who's unaware. Um, I always give the example of a smoker. If somebody smokes cigarettes, they have like one side of their brain that's like, this is bad for me. It's costing me money. It stinks, yada, 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 whatever. And then the other side of their brain is like, but it brings me calm and it fuels my addiction, yada, yada, yada. And so that's very conflicting emotions. Um, I talk a lot, a lot, a lot to kids, teenagers, and young adults about how like that stage of our lives is just chock full of cognitive dissonance. Mm -hmm. um, excuse me. I think we should call that stage the stage of cognitive dissonance personally, because you're moving from, especially with the internet, but you're moving from like your parents' reality is your reality, right? Like everything your parents say to be true in the world is what you believe to be so. And then you enter your teen years, your preteen years, you get exposure to all the world's knowledge at your fingertips. You get overexposed to all the things and it feels very muddied in there, right? It's very confusing. Is my parents' reality my reality? Is the big world's reality my reality? And you're kind of trying to filter through what is your reality at that stage. Um, and I would say most people feel very out of control in their lives during that stage of their lives. Um, I remember very distinctly at like 25, 26 being like, my life is full of a lot less drama. I feel like I'm just making better choices. Um, and then I learned this about the brain. I was like, oh, that makes sense. Um, so I'm not sure again if I'm answering your question, but um, yeah. It's, it's, what was your question? <laughs> you did. Well, my, my question was more around how most people in the workplace haven't really oh, developed the, and, when the does it develop? Mm -hmm. and what I've, what I've noticed from working with people, both as consulting them and their companies, and also just interacting with, with businesses and employees that I've had in the past, I, I have seen, and this is my argument that if you don't intentionally develop the frontal lobe it yep. may be there like you have the ingredients mm -hmm. but it's not all put together and yep. from that stem i think we have a lot of people who in their their late teens and early 20s that's when like you said the belief systems are developing and they walk through life unconsciously with that belief system mm -hmm. and they show up with the ingredients to process life but they haven't put them together to bake mm -hmm. the cake yet mm -hmm. so how does this transition into how we're communicating whether that's in the workplace with our classmates. I know you work with a lot of youth, yeah. um, but how, how does that show up and how can we optimize our communication with each other? Yeah, absolutely. Totally. Um, I'm going to actually speak from a, I'm going to give an example. So I checked myself into a mental health facility and I was, you know, doing this really high level work in, in, um, my husband on the flip side, he did not check himself at that time into a mental health facility. So I came back and I was like, okay, we're going to stop yelling at each other and stop name calling and stop doing all these toxic things. And we're going to do high level emotional and emotionally intelligent type things. We're going to understand when we're um, um, ragey and disconnect and take a break and use coping skills and really frame the conversation so that we're being productive. But my husband was still down here, like wanting to hang up the phone and wanting to walk away and leave the house kind of things. And so I finally got to a place where I was like, I need you to join me up here. So he did, he did the hard work. He did the mental health work. Um, and now we're speaking the same language and we understand like what it means to be doing that work. Um, and so um, I keep forgetting your questions. I'm so sorry. <laughs> what it's were okay. you asking me? So how can we, how can we use this information and improve our communication? So what it sounds like for yeah. me is you, you had a communication structure in place with your husband where you, you were at this higher level. He was not, you asked him to meet you. Let's mm -hmm. go the other way in the workplace. 
you're at, you're still at the high level communication. Your coworkers are not. Yep. How do you come down to meet them and, and bring them up with you? Yeah. And so my husband, going back to my husband example, he did not do as much work as I did. And so there have been times where like past since then we've had issues or fights or just, you know, things come up that I have recognized been able because I did that work to say like, okay, he's not quite in that frontal lobe space right now. He's still very dysregulated. He's still in his emotions. He's not logically cognitively on board. Um, And so I think even just recognizing that in your peers within your organization, like, okay, this person is not cognitively in that same space right now. So maybe I need to give them some space, maybe, um, asking them some questions to kind of help them get to a better space. Um, So maybe, for example, one of the things that I think comes up a lot in the business world is values. We teach values and understanding that people's lived experiences have, have is the journey that has brought them to um, having the values that they do have. Right. And so if I can understand your lived experience and I can understand where you got to have the values that you have, it gives me a completely different understanding of you as a human being. I may be less angry at your values because I can see the journey that has brought you to those values. Um, The other thing that we like to talk about as well that I think is really beneficial in the business world um, is communication styles. I wish somebody had taught me this when I was younger, but my dad, for example, is a very um, aggressive, you know, the communication styles, aggressive, passive, aggressive, passive. And what did I not say? Passive, aggressive, aggressive, passive, uh, you know, all the four communication (laughs) styles. What am I missing? I don't don't know them by label. Anyway. um. (laughs) We'll we'll put them in the show notes. Perfect. (laughs) Yes. I don't know which one I'm missing. But my dad was always a very aggressive communicator. Like he's still an aggressive communicator. But I had to get to a place where I had to recognize his communication style and the content of his communication or what he's trying to communicate are not one in the same. Um, So while he maybe is aggressively communicating things to me, the actual message he's trying to send to me is still very relevant. Perfect. Thank you. Passive, aggressive, passive, aggressive, and assertive. Oh my goodness. Um, But knowing that all of those communication styles have a time and a place, right? Like it's not bad to be an assertive communicator. I'm a very assertive communicator personally, Um, but it's not applicable in all in all realms of our lives, right? And so helping people to understand, even adults, when I talk to adults like this, they're like, I haven't thought about my own communication style in decades. I like literally thought about it in fifth grade once and that was it. But if we can be reminded of how we communicate and what we are communicating are two completely separate ideas and we need to tune into both of them. We need to be paying attention to the content and the how as well. Yeah, that's that's a great, a great lesson and a great way to frame that. So we do have to wrap up here pretty soon. This has been a very insightful episode, um, especially about how your mind works, how you're maybe you're showing up in the present because of the past, but it's unchecked and unregulated. So get a hold on that first and foremost, but let's tie this to the harmonious architecture real quick. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to put Aaron's website on the screen so you can go check that out. Undo mindset.com. Um, we're talking about mind for sure. That's outside of the harmonious architecture, but it is crucial to showing up in business as a leader, as an employee, your mindset has to be right. And then within the architecture, we're talking a lot about I, which is inspire. It's your leadership, how you show up and inspire your people. If I mean, let's just take the last example, communication styles. If you're not communicating effectively with your team, they're not going to follow you because you're going to be the jerk of a boss and nobody's going to listen. And on the flip side of that, the people who are following you or are supposed to follow you is home. Humans optimized in a meaningful environment. It is so powerful as a leader to teach this stuff to your team so that they can communicate with you, with each other, and with themselves and understand where they're at, handling their past traumas, their past experiences, and then showing up as their optimal self. It should be This should be taught in corporate culture way more than it is. Aaron, I want to thank you for bringing this issue to light. And this, I know, is your mission to bring it forward. But this is the kind of stuff that helps build cultures. You can't just have people who are cogs in a system making widgets all day. You have to make them be better human beings, help them develop that frontal lobe, and you're, you will see massive results in your company, I promise. Um, so Aaron, real quick, before we wrap this up, undomindset.com. You have a ton of stuff going on there. 
Um, and you also have a special coupon code for our listeners, which uh, if you would tell us a little bit about what you have going on and I'll put that coupon code on the screen. Yeah, totally. We, um, you know, we're still very much in our development phase as a nonprofit. And so we are um, really trying to gain funds to be able to make our organization um, coast to coast and a free resource for um, all of the public school students, um, their educators and their families. So uh, we do have a shop on our website. If you go to get involved and go to shop, um, all of our proceeds and profit or all of our profits go to our nonprofit. And that coupon code right there will get you 15% off any swag you would like to buy. I love it. I'm going to put that as one, one solid banner here. So it's undo mindset dot com slash get involved coupon code what if we'll put that in the show notes as well if you want to get some cool merch go check it out go support a nonprofit, an amazing cause and show your support um aaron i want to thank you for coming on and like i said bringing this issue to the forefront of people's minds it's something that we need to talk about more and we need to be teaching our kids as leaders we have kids teach your kids that's my message um aaron where can we follow you on social media to to keep up with what you're doing yeah, thank you. Um, you can definitely find us on LinkedIn, on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and we are again, undo mindset, rethink your thinking is our tagline. So if that helps you to find us. I love it. All right. I'm going to put all of that in the show notes, wherever you're watching or listening, it'll be down there. Go follow Aaron, go follow undo mindset. Um, and thank you again for coming. This has been a great episode. And Thanks for you for listening me. and watching Remember to subscribe, like, comment, put your questions down there. We want to know what you're thinking. I will get your questions to Aaron and we'll get them answered. If you want help on integrating this in your corporate culture or just helping you figure this out more in your life, I'm sure she's got resources if she is not the resource and we'll get that stuff answered for you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And we'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch.